Hey, hey, everyone. This is JNA, and this is the Let's Get Loud podcast with JNA. We are getting loud about dieting and diet culture and making you stop dieting. That felt good. That felt good. Okay, wait. I am like this. So I just went on the group just for a second. Okay, our community group. This is a post 47 minutes ago. You are going to die. Okay. So this girl is like, my gym, which I love, has a 16 week challenge challenge starting Monday. It's a fitness challenge, so I was totally down for it. This morning, I opened up the group to see the message below. Needless to say, I responded with my urine weight loss thoughts and promptly took myself out of the challenge. The old me would have jumped at this. This time, this me, sorry, has worked way too hard to get back to that crap. Do you want to hear the message the gym sent to the people doing the fitness challenge starting Monday? I can't, I can't even, okay? Hi, everyone. Here are a few things you will need to get started on Monday. A scale, soft measuring tape, water bottle, preferably large. Stay tuned for more info coming up very soon. P.S. Go through your pantry and start hiding or throw out chips, sugary snacks, salty crackers, cereals, etc. Think clean eating. Alicia, I want to puke. It just shows you, Jose, how much work we still need to do. I can't get over the PS. I can't get over the PS. This is actually PS. You can lose weight in your pantry. PS. There's nothing wrong with chips. PS. And so this is what happened. The happens though. If we were to be like, what are you even saying right now? They'd be like, people want to be told to like, I don't care what people want to be told. People need to be told and people have been told. People have been told for decades to stop eating chips, yet everyone is still obese and still struggling and still searching for weight loss. Clearly, what we have told the people have, has not been really fixing the issue we are dealing with. Oh, ben, oh, ben, lo, oh my God. Again, the diet industry, we have lost sight. Who are these people in this, in this challenge? Are you going to be stepping on stage in a bikini body competition? Is that you? Then sure. If that's your goal, get rid of your chips, but that's not you. Salty crackers, cereal, sugary snacks. I just, I, oh my good. Oh my God. I am just, she has all she too sweet. And here's the thing. I know like, listen, you guys know we don't go to the gym and there's nothing wrong with gyms because we're like, if the intention is to do the thing, like it's really about every individual's intention and whatever, but it's that culture in a gym that I can't get over. And I know that not every gym's the same, but let's be real here. The culture at the gym is let's not eat sugary drinks. Cereal is bad. It's just what it is. Not everyone, but common, the common culture at the gym is that, and it's not your way, weight loss. Like, you know, it's just what it is. Also, what is the percent of people in North America that actually go to the gym and lift weights on a consistent basis? 0.7%, I think. It's <laughs> not high. And yet that's what we're telling everyone they should do instead of just going for an effing walk. Yeah. Fucking walk. Just say it. We're like Beth now. Remember Beth has been on our podcast. No, but it's, it's just so frustrating. And this is what we're working against. And this is making me like, I don't want to be like that. Yuck. Yuck. That does not speak to me. And in my mind, I know that it doesn't. And we're making, that's the difference. Like someone else wrote like, um, uh, oh, and she said, because your damn standards are different now. And thank goodness. And then another girl, I'm so astonished. Now I suddenly read this stuff and I'm thinking toxic, toxic. She goes, thank God for your weight loss. And you go for it. Like she said before I was so into it. Yeah. And that's the thing I, we need to share this. I, I need, we need to talk about this socially. I'm going to ask this girl if I can share this. Um, I, I need, I, oh, I need to talk on my social media about this message. This is not okay. And this is also, we need to talk, we need to talk about this. Oh my God. Okay. So thank you so much. Oh my God. That just like happened right before we press record. Hello everyone. Um, we have amazing podcast coming up. I don't know if you saw Leash, but I sent a message to team. We're going to have to each and every girl on our podcast kind of spread whenever they're available and whatever, but 
uh, I did record with Danica. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to like start posting those and it'll be fun to, to hear about their journey. Danica, I think I'm going to do it in French, mostly in French, just because she's really comfortable with it. Um, and I think that she deserves to have that, you know, feeling really comfortable while she's sharing yeah. it. Um, but other than that, you guys, like these are really, the team is who we, we work with, but also, you know, what upsets me? There's a little part that is like, you know, for us, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm not a PT, you know, I don't want to be a PT. That's not what I do. But like these people are going on the internet and they're like, tips from your friendly PT at the gym. Like as if like it's worth something. I'm sorry, but like when you say bullshit like this and you this is what you send to people, you are doing so much harm. And I, I know this is maybe like tr like drama, but like it's dra like this is I may be being dramatic, but I'm not being dramatic at the same time. Oh, this no, is, this is you're not doing any good though. Nope. You're just perpetuating uh, guilt and fear attached to food. Imagine when that per those people in that challenge, when they break down because they will, and they eat a cracker, what's going to happen? Guilt, yeah. shame, disappointment, spiral, yeah. repeat. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I'm tired with people with like letters beside that. They like, they like, they're like, Oh, I'm like, no, you're just, you still have, most people still have a lot of diet healing to do. This person that wrote that has diet healing, like just because they are slim or maybe have muscles or maybe have letters. That doesn't mean they, they don't have healing to do and they have a relationship with food. They clearly hate chips and they have a relationship with sugary snacks and cereal. I can't do this. This is too much for me. Like I want to attack this person. I need to come back to what you said. Okay. Just because you're slim, you so you're thin or you have muscles or you have letters with your name. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you do not have diet trauma to deal with. It doesn't mean you are healthier. It doesn't mean you are happier. It yeah. just means you are thin. You have muscles. You have formal education. That is literally what it means, you guys. Yeah. And we're not saying that doesn't have value. We're not saying that. But we're what we're saying is it it's not the whole picture. It it's doesn't not the whole picture. Like it doesn't mean you have to listen to what they like doesn't mean you no. you can create that or you have to listen to what they have to say. Oh my God. When you're, if you're trying to heal your diet trauma, lose weight, feel better in your skin, who, like, who do you want to help you with that? Yeah. A muscly man that's never struggled with his weight or his relationship with food. And honestly, they do struggle with their relationship with food. They are not aware that they have this trauma. This person that wrote that thinks they're like the nicest person ever and that they, they have no relationship with food. And they're like, oh, I've never been overweight. Like I'm so like, I have a medal. You know what I mean? Like it's because I don't have sugary snacks, whatever. They don't realize the relationship they have with food and with the, their bodies. I, I just... I am, I am definitely judging this person right now. I just feel that it's so bad. The message is so bad that like, I, there's no way that this person has the healing. Like they have a relationship with dieting. They have a relationship with weight loss and their intention is definitely to scare you create, and they want you to have a physical transformation in 16 and, weeks. And what I think can happen. And again, is dangerous. And most people that are helping people lose weight as PTs are men. Like it's just a male dominated world, right? Yeah. Men are less, men can diet harder mm. without yeah. the drama. Like men can die. Men can do things with food without as much of an impact on their relationship with food. Most yeah. men, right? Yeah. So that's why it's extra dangerous because men are giving this advice to women. They don't realize what they're doing when they're saying these things. Yeah, no, I I see what you're saying. Okay, Whew. remember when I said that this podcast we're gonna stick to the script? I said we we only have so much time. Um, but no, I I was just like very um I'm very um shook shook by this. Um, okay, so number five, we are at tip number five, everyone. Hello, um, this is make it your way. Oh. So yeah, it's a good one. Obviously, I love it. That the the message behind that. Oh my god, my eye is just itchy. The message behind that is that weight loss does not just have one look. So that's that, like, I've been really putting that on the internet lately because people are just telling us what their obstacles are and whether it's they're fussy or they don't like exercise or they don't, whatever. They're like basically naming all the things that they are not, that the avatar weight loss 
person should be doing. So, you know, we've been told by the weight loss industry, if you want to lose weight, you know, you should be counting calories. You shouldn't be eating carbs at supper time. You should be exercising. You should be meal prepping. Um, you shouldn't have these things in your fuss. You shouldn't be fussy. You should love vegetables. You should be eating vegetables. You should be eating fruits and, or even fruits are scary sometimes, uh, depending on which person you're trying to get help from, but which is crazy, ridiculous. Anyways, the message we have is losing weight has like an um, infinite amount of looks. And so you're fussy. So what? Like that fussiness can coexist with weight loss. You don't like exercise. No exercise can coexist with weight loss. Like, and it uh, sometimes upsets people, Alicia. They don't, they're like, Bello, what do you mean? Like, I, I obviously need to do something. Yeah. You need to, you need to, what you need to do is to stop, um, change your relationship with what weight loss needs to look like. Step, uh, like stop labeling yourself as a non weight loss possible person. And then we can start talking because before you can believe that you can coexist with weight loss with you, with you and who you are, you're not going to be able to lose weight your way. 100%. Like, and it's, it's, it's realizing that your environment does not hold you back from weight loss. Like that's so important. That's one of the first steps is that we all have obstacles. Remember that look around people who have been successful with weight loss, have lost the weight, have kept it off. It is not one circumstance. It's not one formula. They all have obstacles. We've just gone in with the attitude of, I will overcome this. I will figure this out. I will yeah. find strategies. So, you know, knowing that is, is going to put you in a position to actually start to create your way. But before yeah. you start to create your way, you have to believe it is possible. And I think that it comes back to tip one, every other tip comes back to tip one. I if know. you do not know calorie deficit, if you do not believe calorie deficit, if you don't understand calorie deficit, you literally like other, if you don't know those things, you will never understand why you could lose weight without a meal plan, why you could lose weight without counting calories. Why? Like, if you don't understand tip one, then all the other tips are bullshit to you. Like, cause you don't believe it. You don't believe tip one. Tip one is the most important one. So go back to tip one if you need to. And tip one is what we like. We have a full course on tip one about calorie deficit and your beliefs around it. And we need to talk to you. But honestly, if you don't, you need to know tip one calorie deficit so that you can know that your way is possible. So, and, and then when you know that it's possible, you start creating your way. And then when you realize that it can look in, it, it can look in so many different ways, even the way that you first lost weight, which was your way, it can always change when life happens. You can always adjust because there's multiple ways to keep the weight off. There's multiple ways to, to create weight loss for yourself. So you don't have to stay stuck in one way forever just because you found your way at the beginning your way will keep changing so it develops that skill of adjusting that is definitely needed for consistency if you cannot adjust you're not going to make it because yeah. this is a lifelong commitment and you're going to get a new job you're going to get divorced you're going to have a kid you're going to move your house you're going to things change so you need to have that skill of adjusting well, yes so when it's your way quitting is not an option because it's your way. So if your way is no longer appealing to you, fucking change your way, go to another way. There are so many ways. And so that's why when we hear people like, oh, I'm just like, I'm not into it anymore. Into what? The own, the, your way that you created yourself, change it then. Be in control, be the advocate of how you live your life. And it's that, it's almost that power that we need to keep giving the people. Like you can change it, you can change your mind. I freaking said six days ago that I was gonna drink, I wasn't gonna drink coffee for two weeks. I changed my mind. I didn't talk shit. Terrible. I didn't feel guilty about it. You know what I'm really proud of though? I am seven days in or six days into no Splenda. Okay. And like, and I like the, and it's not no Splenda forever. Splenda was the biggest issue for me in terms okay. of like values. Yeah. The other things was like more like experimental, whatever. I never said that I would never eat, drink coffee again. Absolutely not. But it's, this was more like values for me. The Splenda part was values and it's not zero Splenda, but I want to see, I want to almost, I know it's taste buds. I know it is like, it's like, I've always given it so much that I'm like, if I give it nothing and I go through it, maybe next time, if I give a, put a cup of Splenda in my coffee, I'm like, this is disgusting. I want to get to the part where you are that you find that that's disgusting. Okay. 
You see what I mean? Yeah. And so you're, like, it, to- it will adjust. Like your taste buds will adjust. I know it will. So I need to give it time, but knowing that I'm full control allows me the no drama behind my choice and that I can decide at any time. So even when I said two weeks, it was five days in and I'm like, you know what? I don't like that. I decided that I want to change my mind. There was no drama. I didn't talk shit about myself. So I'm like, I can't stick to it. I'm not, con- no, I am in charge. There's nothing wrong with coffee. So see how like the, the it's the, all the work from before that is paying off right now in my decisions. So I love what you touched on and you said the word value. So right now we're talking to you guys about doing it your way. And I, and, and there, I think there's two pieces to your way. Piece one is like a way that fits with your actual like physical environment, like your circumstances, like your job, your home life. Like that's like create your, your budget. Like that's a big part of your way. But then a, a big part of, as well is your values. And this is something we've been speaking about for literally years, but I think it's finally getting there. I heard, I saw someone comment on social media. They were like, I love your way is, is explaining for people to lose weight with aligns with their values. And I'm like, yes, but people have never considered their values as a part of the conversation. Yeah. So Jose's change, I know it's not weight loss related because Splenda has zero calories, but let's pretend it was a change that had to do with calories you didn't do that to lose more weight. Like your change is not with the intention of weight loss. No, your change is with the intention of that. If that doesn't feel good to me, like those are not my values. Yeah. And we just, that's a piece of your way, you guys. So you need to figure out what are your food values? Like is nutrient dense actually a part of your values? Or is that just something you feel like you should? And I want you to know that your values are going to keep changing with life. Okay. And with life in general, it's just called what you focus on, what your values are, but also in food, like your values, like after sometimes I, I truly believe that at the beginning, it's more about learning what your food values are than actually trying to get better food values. Like, so for example, like if you have a lot of weight to lose, you could value nutrient dense foods and you know you want to value that you know you know like this is important to you but you know you haven't been feeding your body with nutrient dense foods for a little while so I think that you can decide that your values right now are I want to learn how to create weight loss for myself without it being so damn hard so you can lose weight not changing your food values right away just consuming less really focusing on that knowledge of calorie deficit and then let's say you're within your weight loss journey you're like I'm tired of eating Oreos for lunch I want to change my now I can focus on nutrient dense foods because I feel like I have a grasp I have experience I have whatever and then that can change so I think there's a process here and you know when we were I was being interviewed with um would you eat a donut a day P.S. Our documentary is on YouTube. I don't know if you missed it, but like it's everywhere. It's on YouTube. And I think it's being watched by a lot of people. And I am very excited about it. I think people are are really enjoying it. And that makes me so happy. Um, the thing is, I was being interviewed and it was from someone that doesn't know your weight loss. And she's like, do you feel bad telling people to eat, you know, not nutrient dense foods? And I'm like, wait a second. I'm not telling them to eat that. I'm not telling not to eat that. You know, I think we need to, I think there is a conversation, there is space for calorie deficit. You can lose weight eating what you want. I think that conversation needs to be more on the table. Um, and that's the conversation we want to bring to the table. That's our conversation at your weight, weight loss. Then I said to her, she's like, well, do you like, you know, is there a point where in someone's journey, you then say, you know what? You shouldn't be eating Oreos for lunch. You should be eating a salad. She asked that. And I said, absolutely not. They're going to have that conversation within themselves. It is their conversation to have with themselves. It is not my job to say, well, now that we've lost 50 pounds with eating Oreos for lunch, we should be switching to vegetables now. I think that that conversation is going to authentically happen. If the person wants to keep losing weight, they'll they'll start valuing volume. They're st- they'll start valuing what they're eating versus the portion. Like, I, I think that happens organically in a weight loss journey. It does. And so when she was like, oh, it. okay. When, when we, let, we it. let it. When, and when we get there. If and we everyone, even like, get there. And there's no magical number or time frame or everyone's yep. so different. But we, we've seen with our eyes what happens when we let our members, when they have autonomy. Yeah. 
they naturally gravitate. And it's like, there's only so much mental space in your brain for this piece and part of your life. And so if at the beginning, things feel hard at the beginning of a weight loss journey, and you're just focusing on that, and then you will feel ready to add the piece of this. So you can have your values in your brain and you can be flirting with adding them in, but it's just not right now. Maybe like it's, yeah. it's not all or nothing. It's, it's complicated. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, okay. So I actually wrote this. It goes perfectly with what you were saying. You're simply on your own journey to weight loss while losing weight. Make sure you're focusing on who you want to be and not what you want to look like. I think that's a big part of like, because that's creating your way. Because honestly, if you're focusing on what you want to look like, that has a way to it. And I think that, you know, like, I think it's like, I want to look like her, um, then yeah, it's probably broccoli and fish for supper, but that it doesn't have to be like that. Cause it, that shouldn't be your focus. Okay. Create the person you've always wanted to be. What is that person's values? Not what that person looks like. Okay. So what is that person's values? What is that person's priorities and preferences? What makes that person happy? Not what makes that person look that way. Because you only on social media, this is the bad part about social media is a lot of people aren't talking on social media. They're just showing. And so we're talking a lot. People know who we are. They know what makes us happy. They know who our friends are. We talk, 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 talk. A lot of people just show up and they just show and they show what they want to show (laughs) and they don't even talk to their people. So they show their abs, they show their looks, they show what they're wearing. They show their husband, they show a perfect picture of their family and they're not talking And it's the talking piece that is that reflecting and that, that conversation that's not happening on social media right now, that is almost blinding everyone to the truth and the honesty behind the pictures, behind the body. And so that's, that's more and more happening on the internet, but you have to be on that side of the internet. It's like, welcome to the side of the internet where it's not about what we look, you know, I should do a TikTok on that. Um, But like, I, I really feel like it really depends on what your internet is full of. And it should be about life experiences and, and the person's value. And that person should be talking to you, should add value to your life. A person that posts a picture of how fucking amazing they look and how lean they are and how I don't know. Oh my God. Like I've never had that even as a young child. So I don't know how these people do it. But like, you know, those like 22 year olds that their bodies are just fucking perfection, Alicia, you know. Like it's perfection. They're wearing those like, okay, like basically like uh, like Dana. Her body is perfection. There's not one piece of cellulite, okay? And there is not one extra piece of something. There's no piece. <laughs> There's no extra pieces. There's no extra pieces. And it's quite it's quite interesting to me because that girl works for her body but never shows a picture of like how friggin' epic it is. Okay, you see, I see what, what I'm mean? saying? You see what I'm saying? All of her posts about how her life, her fun. So that's why I know it's authentic to her. It's not all about what she is. She loves how she looks, but don't get me wrong. She likes to show it, but it's not like, look at social media. I'm going to show my strangers. How, like she works. So she loves what she does. She really does. She, I see her loving lifting weights and doing her thing. It is really much her way. And it is within her four walls of what she does. No kids doing her thing. Good for her. But it's just like, when I see these people really being like, I look like this because I go to the gym and I, and I lift this and, or I do this move. I am sorry, your tiny legs with no cellulite, even if I were to go to the gym and do squats with the with the bar, I, I would never have that. You know what I mean? And so it's that piece of like, I don't even know how you got that. Like, that's amazing. Like, wow. You know, and it's almost like your skin. I'm never going to have your skin, even if I do the, 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 the skin, like I'm going to have the best Jose skin, but I've never had no redness or no pimple on the way or, you know what I mean? And so it's like, wow, how do you do that? No matter what I do, I'm not going to have that. And so I, I, and no matter what I do, I'm never going to have thick, long hair. And no matter, like, it's just, there are consequences or not consequences, but there are circumstances that are just not in our, you know what I mean? Like, no matter how many sit-ups you do, you're not going to get the abs I have. Like, it's just what it is. Okay. So I think that that we need to be careful because a lot of the internet is if you do this, you're going to look like me. I look this way because of that. And it's just not the truth. It's okay. just not the truth. I mean, yeah. again, we're fighting against that though. We're fighting yeah. against the sexiness, the thinness, the perfection ness of the body and being like, look at my body. If you do this, your body can look like this. And we're not showing our bodies so much. I mean, we will go for it, but we're not like do this and look like this. We're just trying to show you how beautiful our lives are. And do you know what? Some people notice 
Oh, some yes. people, they say to us, are you really that happy? You guys look so free. Your life looks so yeah. incredible. And I'm like, thank you for noticing. You know thank what you I, for noticing. Yes, thank you for noticing. And now it just gets me to another thing. I love Emily Skyfit. I, I like her. I like, I like what yeah. like I, I, yes. I like to follow her. Yeah. Um, I like what she's about. I see she works very hard for like, she's had two babies. She's pushed herself. Like it is insane what she has accomplished with that body. I agree. But, but honestly, I'm like, because I have that such a good relationship with my life and my body and what I do, and, and I can separate me to her. I know not everyone can do that. Not everyone can separate themselves from what they see on the internet. Okay. And everything she shows is always, it's not a lot of like her fun life. And like, it's like, I look like this because of the hard work I do. I look like this because I have motivation. I look like this because I have discipline and a lot of it. And I love her and I'm not shitting on her message, but there's a lot of that on the internet. Huh? I look like this because I work hard. I look like this. And like, for us, I'm like, look how good I look and look how fun I am. Like, so basically our message is a little different. It's not look at, I think we look great. I think we have what most women out there want to look like in terms, you know, I do believe that like, they just want what like kind of, it's not about the look. It's not at the, I mean, there, it's not perfect. No. Okay. I have like no breast and like whatever, but I think in general, they're like extra breast. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Alicia has extra breast. I have no breast. I have tons of cellulite. I have shakily everything. uh, Alicia has loose skin, uh, all of it. Okay. But I do think in general, I would agree. Most of the people would be like, I signed up for that. See what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so I'm like, and we're literally selling on the internet. Look how much fun you can have and, and have this. And we're not like, look how hard. And then you look like that. Like, it's just like, look how much fun. And we always think that weight loss or the body we would, you know, straight trade has to be so much work. And we're selling that it doesn't have to be so much work that you can have so much fun. And yeah, I don't look like Emily Skyfit, but I'm having so much fun on this side. And I feel like that's not being sold enough on the internet. And so we're kind of like that space. And I see like, I see that I have this one girl, she's gorgeous, lost so much weight. She has like a nose ring. She's young. Oh my God, Ali Bill. Okay. And I follow her young, no kids. Like, you know, like the typical, like she's just like built her body really spends a lot of time at the gym. Okay. And um, like her fun is like, see, I can have a drink with my friends. And it's like once in a while. <laughs> okay. That's like how she promotes that she can still live life while she's doing her thing. We're like next level. Like it. Say I can't put her the apple crumble and then sh- shots. And then like, so it's like, we're like almost like, okay, but like, I want more fun than that. I just like, don't want the one drink every Saturday. I want like the steak and I want the thing and I want the Friday night and I want the lunch with my friends and I want, I don't want the salad at lunch. I might want like a something else. You know what I mean? Maybe a burger with a salad. So it's like, there's a little bit more fun to our look, but I think a lot of people will straight trade for our look. I you see what I mean? I know, but they still get distracted. They're still getting distracted We're by the physical fun. Oh, we're trying, we're doing our best. I think we're changing a lot of people's, uh, out, out, uh, like outlook on what they actually want and also what's a co- what is to accomplish. So when it comes to us and what we're selling on the internet in terms of our lives or whatever, it's like, this could is a con- like, you can have so much fun. Yeah. You don't have abs like Emily's uh, sky fit, but you would never. And that life is not what you want. Like we're trying to make them realize like, this is not what you want. Most people, the common human wants that look, but not the life but you can have this look in the life. So like, that's kind of like what we're, is this? And I know that most people would straight trade for our look. Um, and so that's why I'm like, this, this is possible for you guys. We would have straight traded for our look, right? 70 pounds heavier. 100%. Okay. There we go. All right. We got to go have a fantastic day. I don't even know what day this is or when this comes out. Uh, please have a look if it, we have any specials or maybe a free trial. There's always something going on at your weight loss. So please follow us on our social media. Come and find us. Watch our documentary if you have not. If you have not, I am I am, ups- I am insulted. I'll just go straight to that. I am upset that you have not watched our documentary. It is the most beautiful piece of content out there. If you enjoy Alicia and I and just watching us, I mean, there's nothing better than that documentary. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.